Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jessica Alex, and I'm an international student. I'm from Haiti. I'm studying accounting in an international business. I've been part of SGA for two years. I studied as a senator and as a speaker of the Senate, and now I was, I was the vice president, and now I'm back. I'm back because the students have been expressing, expressing themselves enough. I'm back because it's time to take action. And that's why you should vote for me. Hey everyone. So my name is Hamza Rahman, and I am a political science student here uh, at GSU. And I am running for EVP. I am currently a senator for the College of Arts and Sciences, and I have been honored with the endorsements of the Black Student Alliance, as well as the College Republicans. And I am here to bring a state of change. I want to change the very culture of SGA at GSU. I want SGA to be the go-to place for student issues. When a student has an issue, I don't want them to go to the administration first. I want them to come to us so that we can figure out a solution together and we can take it to the administration as a united student body. The main issues I want to focus on are reform in housing and parking and working with local government to alleviate the housing crisis in Atlanta. Thank you so much. Hey everybody, my name is Greg Wright. Sorry, I'm kind of loud. I'm always in them. Uh, I uh, decided to run for EVP because I want to create more leaders within SGA. I feel like that's something that we are lacking. Um, I want to improve everything that everything that SGA stands on. Um, I plan on uh, turning Tuesdays into a day where we uh, go out and we put on our blue shirts and we promote who we are and what we represent. I feel that that's the gap that's missing between students and I'm ready to be that person that steps in and makes that happen for us. Our first question uh, takes us to Mr. Kaliks. In your platform, you stated there is a lack of communication between the student body and the administration, and you would like to serve as a mediator between the two. In your year of absence as SGA, from SGA, what have you done to advocate for the student body? Actually, before I start talking about the mis mis miscommunication between SGA and the administration, we got to realize that the students, they have been expressing themselves you know. All the other candidates, they've been talking about, okay, they want the students, they want the students to talk so their voice can be heard, and da da da. But they've been expressing them, themselves, and that's the reason why you guys are here. It's because you understand that they, they, they have, they, there are some things, there are things that must be done, and I want to take care of that by uh, actually taking action because this is time, this is our time, this is HS time, and the administration's time to listen and actually take action. That's the reason why I said yes, there was a miscommunication because we are both, we are not on the same page. Our next question is for Mr. Ramon. Following the first university-wide meeting of the semester, you were involved in an altercation with student protesters on your, protesting your attendance on a trip to Israel, in which you called one recent graduate a daughter of a donkey. Do you think this was appropriate and how do you plan to approach similar situations under pressure as EVP? Thank you. Um, I apologized for those remarks um, in the next edition of The Signal. The altercation took place in Arabic. Um, and right before that altercation took place, um, this student told me, and my respect, to go eat, S word, um, and said, shit may be upon you, uh, multiple times. I apologize for those remarks, though. It is not okay for you to stoop down to the level of someone cursing at you. That's just never okay for a leader to do. Um, the altercation that occurred was one that was fundamentally personal to me as well, because these students had attacked me personally um, back in November, and the situation got heated. Looking back at it, I wish I would have taken a minute to breathe before I had said anything. Um, but I had been going through these attacks since November. It had been three months at this point, and this was the first time I'd seen these persons. So I did let my emotions get the best of me. In the future, though, I hope that I will take a minute to take a breather and consider the repercussions of my actions. Our next question is for Mr. Wright. As the chair of the bylaws committee, what's the biggest challenge you face in terms of modifying the bylaws? No. Uh, my biggest challenge is being enforcing the point system. Um, I feel like uh, it's time for a change. Uh, we got to start holding each other accountable as student leaders. Um, that's something that I'm pushing for as EVP. I know um, as senator, it's kind of been a struggle to push my ideas on everybody. And I feel that that's just because of the position that I'm in. Um, I feel that as, a, as, a, uh, as EVP, I'll be able to be on that platform and be able to change things. And people will look at me and be like, oh yeah, that's the, I, we should be following him because he's leading by example. 
Explain your knowledge on the role of EVP. What does an ideal EVP look like, and how will you embody that? So, in my view, an ideal EVP is someone who is always accessible, whose door is always open. The EVP is the most powerful position on the Atlanta campus SGA. The EVP is who represents Atlanta campus as a whole in front of the administration. The EVP is, who chairs the, is the person who chairs the Diversity Fee Council, who takes all the legislature's actions from the Atlanta Senate into action. If that person is not accessible at all times, you don't have a functioning EVP. And as EVP, I pledge to have the longest office hours possible, the most accessible office hours possible. I also feel like the EVP needs to be someone that's doing outreach themselves. And as EVP, I pledge that I will attend every Greek chapter, every major organization on campus, and I will do outreach with them. I will talk to them. I will talk to them about what issues you have that are facing you and your community, discuss them, and try to come up with a solution for them. As EVP, the EVP is the leader, first of all, and the EVP is the one who sets the example. That's all that I'm striving for, is setting the example, changing everything that we can change. Uh, I feel as if um, this is like the biggest, this is like one of the biggest elections so far, and um, I hope that everybody is paying attention and, and realizing what we've been going through as an organization and is willing to step in with me and help change SGA as a whole. That's what EVP is to me, a leader. Is there anything specific as far as what the EVP does that you have knowledge about? What do you, I mean, what do you mean? Well, what? the Atlanta Campus EVP co-chairs two fee councils. Okay. I mean, that was just something that Humphrey just, I didn't want to piggyback off his words. So, Mr. Felix, you said that you were actually the executive vice president of the Dome Campus, prior to. You were my speaker of the Senate. Yeah. <laughs> well, for the sake of the audience, um, you were previously an executive vice president of the Dunwoody campus. Now, from your tenure experience as a member of the Dunwoody Senate, what was your biggest accomplishment that you would like to bring to the Atlanta campus? Actually, my biggest accomplishment was, uh, I don't, actually, I gotta say, the, when I was EVP of the Dunwoody, Dunwoody was the most successful campus. Yes. Not true. I gotta say. And uh, the first thing that I did, I put everybody on the same page. We had this meeting called Table Ronde, which is a French word for, for round table, where we got everybody together and we, we used to eat together, talk, uh, we used to talk about um, issues together and, do, and try to find solutions together. So that was the first thing that I did. The second thing that I did, as previously I was the senator of the clubs and organizations, so I made sure that we actually reach out to the clubs and organizations where at this time we had more student involvement and we had more people coming to us and, and actually express themselves. And the third thing that I did, actually that I studied, it was, uh, I don't know if I can have more, more than one minute because I really care about that story. Actually, a student came to me and then um, it was a transgender student, and then she was talking about the fact that one professor had some difficulties with her. So instead of, let's, say, let's take an example, instead of calling her Jessica, she wanted to be named or to be called by another name, and then she was very stressed about it. And then I started writing a bill, and I have to say that um, President Patterson, he actually made sure that the, this bill actually is, is, uh, is approved by the university. And if this can be approved today, it's because I studied this with my whole team, the Dolody team. And that's the reason why um, different group students on, on campus can have access to, those, uh, to this possibility, actually. So how would you deal with a president that is not fulfilling your duties as SJ president? If I do uh, win EVP, I'm going to hold my president accountable. Um, and um, I'm going to impeach you. <laughs> I think Greg said it pretty beautifully. Um, I would also impeach you. If you are not here to do the job that you were elected to do, you don't deserve to be here. Um, and thank goodness now, thanks to Greg, we do have a point system in place that we very easily can impeach you. I don't have to sit through a session of the Senate to get you out of your job. 25 points and you're done. Um, so I would not hesitate to kick out a president that doesn't do their job.
A question from Holmes says, it was apparent that members of the Atlanta campus are not willing to have civil discourse. They are far more willing to fight and not debate. How would you work with these students? I believe in persistency. You just gotta be persistent, consistent, and there's gotta be a solution, ultimately. There has to be a solution. There must be a solution. We'll find it. Uh, the last question is directed to um, Mr. Rahman. Um, so, if elected, how would you work with um, other campuses as the Atlanta campus EVP to create a greater GSU? Uh, right now, there's not a lot of cooperation between campuses, and part of that is that there's nothing to really come in and unite all of these campuses. Um, we're effectively five separate campuses that kind of do our own thing, and occasionally students will cross over and do something here or do something at another campus. Um, one of the things I'm a huge proponent of is creating a bus route between all of the campuses, uniting all of the campuses, giving all students access to all of the campuses. Um, the second thing I, was, I would do is uh, based on one of President Patterson's initiatives, which is to unite the campuses, campuses through a tradition. Um, the tradition that President Patterson came up with um, that I fundamentally support is the tradition of a torch. Lit at the Atlanta campus first, passed down to all of the other campuses, and brought back for homecoming. And the final torch is lit, uh, lit at the homecoming game.